I want to start first at at the beginning uh, and about how you guys got to be part of Madonna's Blonde Ambition Tour. Jose, why were you picked to be one of the dancers? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it was really weird. I, it was something that I was I didn't set out to do. You know, I was training professionally as a professional ballet dancer, and I was into my studies, and I was going out to clubs a lot, though, like on the weekends and stuff, and that's how I came across her, and she had heard about me. And you were known in New York for being a bit of a Vogue dancer. Yeah, right, right. So I would go to this club in Vogue, and I knew her, her hairstylist at the time, who's an actress now, Debbie Mazar. And me and her were friends in the club scene. And she told me, "Um, Madonna's going to be looking for dancers. And I never believed her for some reason. And then one night, Madonna was there and she brought me to her. And she was like, this is the guy I was telling you about. And I'm like... (laughs) And yeah, and then from then on, I auditioned for her right there on the spot. She said, I heard you do this Vogue thing and I want to see... And I remember that I wasn't dressed appropriately. You know, I was very into fashion growing up. And I remember having an outfit that was kind of constricting. I was very into like design or Gautier, and which later on it was so great to use a mentor because I was always a fan growing up of his, cl- of his clothing. So it was so funny because she made her bodyguard give me his pants. Yeah, and we so went, that you could do some so of your, that I, your yeah, moves in yeah, better clothes. And yeah, we went into the VIP bathroom, and she's like put on his pants and I thought she was joking and I'll never forget she stood right there in typical Madonna fashion and just watched me take off my I'm like you're not gonna leave in my head I'm like and she's like go ahead you know I've seen them all what you have I've seen you know and I'm like okay and sure enough he stood in the bathroom while I went out in his pants and auditioned for her more or less, and I was very fortunate. And then we, once the club got winded that she was there, the whole club turned into like an audition, you know? Kevin, what was your audition process oh, like? God, mine, <laughs> That's mine, a story. What was yours like? Mine was pretty standard with the audition part itself. Um, I didn't realize there were going to be thousands of people like there like there were. But but because had you, the, there was an ad in the paper, she, in the by paper this point she put an ad in the paper mm-hmm. looking for. I believe the quote was fierce, fierce male dancers, male dancers. wimps, <laughs> and wannabes need not apply. And at the time, I don't even think I knew that word fierce. I mean, in a general sense, but right. not like as a New York like fierce. Yeah. Like, I was like, does she want me to be? <laughs> I know what she wants. <laughs> and uh, I, I the first call that we went to was actually the, the easiest audition I've ever had. Easiest. It was just a, a four counts of eight, easy street moves we always do in a club. If you've never been to that club, you never know how to do them. But, but she wanted you to bring more than your dance moves. Um, mm-hmm. What what did what else did she really want you guys to bring? Because there's a lot of people who can do the moves. What did yeah. what did she see in you? What did she need you to put on the table to make her choose you? Me particularly, because she did. She chose me last <laughs> by far. I didn't have the job even <coughs> during the first two weeks of rehearsal. I was the associate choreographer and I wasn't on the tour. And it wasn't until I think she saw that I gave everything that I could and that I could do all these different styles and that I interacted really well with all of them that I, that then she offered me the job. Mm-hmm. Like she fired somebody else and brought me in. So I, yeah, I'm not sure what I brought initially. <laughs> well, you, I, you got that sense from all of you guys. You certainly see it in the documentary that you do just, you, you give it. You don't, don't seem to be holding anything back. Oliver, when you found out that you had made it, made the cut for, the, for Madonna, what was your reaction? I, um... My reaction was, well, first of all, I was the last one to get picked. Um, no, no. <laughs> I was the last one to get picked, but then he was the last one to get picked because they hired they fired, another, yeah. they fired another guy and he, yeah. So, mm. But I went home actually to my mother. I'm going to always remember this day. She was laying in her waterbed <laughs> and it was dark. And, and I think my father might have been somewhere and nobody was in the house except for her. I went in the bedroom and she was asleep. Oh. And I stood in front of the bed and I said, Mom, I got the tour. And she just sat up and that was it. And the waterbed bounced all over the place with her excitement. It was beautiful. I couldn't believe it. The tour itself, I mean, anybody who's been involved in any theater company or any performance troupe will recognize just the camaraderie and the f- the community that you guys uh, had, it seems like, on the What was it like? Jose, describe, I mean, it's, it's described in the documentary as a fishbowl situation. You're all swimming in it together. What was it like for you, that tour? 
It was like exactly that. I mean, we were so young and so unaware of how the impact that it was going to create later on. And I think that it was like surreal at times. I mean, it mm-hmm. was it was overwhelmingly surreal. And it was like a chance of a lifetime, I want to say. You know, it was definitely something that I got the opportunity to encounter so early on and it was magical you know like to what, be able what was the surreal part i mean i know there was one part in the movie where they talk about you looking out at the crowds and people <sighs> people weren't just holding up signs for madonna they were holding, holding up, up signs, signs for, for us, you guys for us. yeah and that was like amazing hearing these people like scream out your name and they knew you by name and then doing, doing, that. doing, yeah. doing the choreography while we're doing it and stuff and, like that yeah. and like at wembley stadium um it was daylight when we first started, and you could just see it. It was like a wave. Mm-hmm. It was like a Michael Jackson concert. We're when seeing them race to you, and like racing to the we're stage. To the and stage. Like they we're still in a sound check, and they're like yeah, they a wave of people like screaming uh, at you. Yeah, yeah. and compared to Japan, people they just sat down. They were very. Play. Oh, but that meant they, they were enjoying it. They were enjoying it. They, yeah, they, they just didn't show they much didn't show emotion. Yes. And we were like, why do they look so bored? Yeah, yeah. but they weren't. Yeah, they I weren't. Think. It was so Our sold experience out. was very insular. You know, there wasn't, we were uh, like, it was just us and the world, you know, because we were all together all the time, day, night, dinner, rehearsals, <laughs> everything, mornings. Yeah. It was just us. And well, we it was just you media. and Madonna. And Madonna, I mean, yeah. Minor yeah. Well, she's one of us. What was, to describe the relationship, Kevin, that you guys all, you and the other dancers, had with Madonna? Gosh. Um, well, I think at that point, she, and maybe not ever before and ever since, she had she gave us she gave complete access to herself mm-hmm. and herself as a person to us. Yeah. And at any moment, we could approach her, knock on the door, or even in the middle of the night, or at her dressing room, s- say anything we wanted. It was this big open <laughs> space to just like interact. And it was really weird because, according to like people that have worked with her in the past, she never really like. And, and engaged, and like engaged with her dancers the way she did with us. Yeah. We found out later on, you know, and yeah. it was like I thought that was just how she was. <laughs> right, it was just like so cool. I was like, oh wow, yeah. she's she's a big star, but she's like so cool and down to earth, you know. Mm-hmm. We invited her out to Magic Mountain. Yeah. Like, just, I mean, it was like that's yeah. that easy. Over she was house, like a mother. So she, there was there was a maternal aspect to yeah. it, wasn't Absolutely. it? Yeah. The, the way she was with you. Am I right in that she could also be uh, mean and and condescending sometimes? Was that an aspect uh, that you experienced? To us, I particularly. mean, I've seen her be mean. I've a seen lot. her be mean as well, but and stuff like that. Yes. And I mean, the fact that she's such a hard worker and so, so, so creative and such a perfectionist, I think that sometimes people misinterpret that. But as, that, that's part of it. I mean, that's just part of her job. That's a part of her, and you know, she's a perfectionist. Well, mean is how people interpret things, and it's like yeah, she yeah. expects people to work as hard as right, she, she does on her project, or she wants to be perfect. Yeah. And I'm exactly the same way, so I totally understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No problems here, you know. Oliver, I'm going to out you here. Oh, uh, oh, you already oh. outed yourself in the movie. Um, <laughs> wow. You, you, were, you were very flamboyant, and yet you were really? the only really? straight. Uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> you were. Wasn't he too much with oh those sparkles God. and the, the glitter matching and the leather jackets and shoes? I learned from shoes. them, but uh, you know what? But you, li- well, you did learn from them because you, the same you were the only straight backup dancer in the group. Correct. And you admit to being... Uh, homophobic before yes. you joined this tour. So very, what what else did you learn from these guys? You know, they, they they just taught me a lot. Um, I was very naive. I was nineteen, um, and I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I mean, <laughs> you were from ready. I, was, I wasn't <laughs> ready. Any of us were ready. I wasn't even ready when it first started. The Vogue video. Um, Kevin, I mean not Kevin, Gabriel and his man at the time. My I brought my brother on the set, and they both kissed. And me and my brother looked at each other. Was like, what? The heck? <laughs> <laughs> so that already freaked me out. But then, um, as the tour went on, I, I learned so much. They they taught me not to be so ignorant and naive. And um, they're just a special group of guys, and I cannot <laughs> express it. I say it all the time, and I'm sure they're tired of hearing me say it. But it's the <laughs> truth. They, I want to be that spokesperson <laughs> for those. Homophobes. Homophobes. <laughs> because I used to be that way. Uh. And people, we are all human. We all do the same thing, and it's, it's, uh. it's so dope. It, it really <laughs> is. I mean, you got to just imagine me coming from New Orleans to L.A. in 85, 
And then I'm there from 85 to 90. And then all of a sudden I get Madonna's tour. The, <laughs> I, I, come on. The whole new world. <laughs> come on. I mean, you can't beat that. You know, and from 1990 until now, life has been great, except mm. for the little ups and downs that we all had. But but it really opened up oh, your, your and, mind and your world. And they yeah. get this second chance in life. Well, and it's interesting because that documentary, Truth or Dare, uh, famously featured, uh, I don't know if that's the kiss you're referring to, but there no, was no. very famous, <laughs> a no. very famous kiss in that film of, of two of your fellow dancers. That kiss. Kissing. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> A one. kiss to remember. Um, <laughs> and it was, <laughs> it was one of the most, um, I mean, the impact there was really one of the first mainstream films to show gay men being themselves. Um, Kevin, what did you see of the of the as the purpose and the message behind that film? Well, behind the film, the uh, the whole film. Yeah, I think it was just to put a mirror to people and say, "Look, this is the world the way it is. The way that you're like trying to pretend that it isn't the way it is is is." It is, it's, and I'm going to put it out there for you to see. Yes. <laughs> it, it, it's a, it, With no worries. Just I'm going to put it out there. Everyone needs to sort of face their own truth, and Madonna really wants people to question themselves, question their society, question life, question where they're in denial of just the way things are. And, and the fact that she chose such a diverse group of dancers from all different backgrounds and all different races and different sexualities, like she wanted... She was a, a, a vanguard of diversity. Mm. And, yeah. Okay, that's an interesting setup to the point, you know, this idea of, um, of uh, getting rid of that, of that denial and that illusion of the way things might be. Mm. The film Truth or Dare was, was a backstage look at the tour. But as I mentioned earlier, there was a whole other backstage, mm -hmm. a whole other backstage. What was really going on um, with three of your fellow dancers? Well, at the time, we were so unaware of what was going on with them, you know, and come to find out that a lot of them, well, the three of them, rather, were, doing, were dealing with, like, serious medical issues that at the time were, like, taboo, which it was AIDS, you know, mm -hmm. um, and at the time, it, it was silence. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. never discussed it. There was no medications. No one, no one knew what it was. So... We were unaware of what was yeah. going on with the three of them. I, I didn't find that out till like yeah. 25 years later. 25 years later, <laughs> yeah. exactly. The, the, the little excerpt that we played there, that was Carlton. Yeah. We heard that in the intro, yes. Keeping the Big Secret. He was one of the three dancers who yeah. were HIV positive. I mean, what do you do? Do you go to Madonna and tell yeah. her, hey, yeah. I got HIV, you, you can lose your job. You, you know? lose yeah. your job, you could be a pariah, you could never work again. And You'd when, be you're, when you're given that diagnosis, he said, you know, I have five years to live max. Like, it was a death. <laughs> Sentence. What Who do you? Says that? What do you do in your five years? Like I'm gonna live full out and be everything I can. That's and what it, he was told. It drove him a little. It drove him a little loony. Crazy. I, on tour, he was a little loony to me. And once he came to terms yeah. with all of that and accepted all of it oh and became and yeah. became free by by saying talking about his status and everything. What was your was response, person. Oliver, when you did finally find out what oh, these these dear intimate friends of yours had had gone through and had kept secret? Well, we broke you, down. You, I broke oh, down. You, you saw it in in, in Strike a Pose uh, at the round table in our reunion. I I couldn't. Still, right now, I'm still bugged out. I I it couldn't. Was, I just couldn't believe what I was hearing. But like I told them in the movie, I said, you could have told us this. And we'd, know, we'd have been okay with it. Yeah. And go figure. Homo, homo. It's hard to see our brothers you know? suffering. Suffering, yes. You know? And to and, know that they were suffering And they were hiding it, keeping it on in. Their own. That's even more keeping painful. It in and yeah. it, it, was, it wasn't disturbing. It was, I actually felt good for Slam when he came on and said it. it you know, because a lot of, a lot of weight got... Yeah. Oh, yeah, you, you tell. felt it. You yeah, felt it. Yeah, you yeah. felt yeah. You, you see Come it. off of him. Well, yeah. and I've got to state the obvious irony here, but you're singing uh, "Express Yourself." Mm -hmm. You know, you're uh, you're talking about you're in this, as we said, the documentary "Truth or Dare" and mm -hmm. celebration of the truth. And you're, uh, as you've said, this film and this tour with uh, was supposed to be just laying it all out, letting yeah. go. Yeah, letting go. But really, there was some stuff yeah. being held Kept very in. back. I mean, I. We know the intention of the tour was never necessarily from the beginning. Like, we're going here to express ourselves. Yeah. I think that sort of uh, uh, observation about the tour sort of happened 
immediately after, after yeah. and after yeah. like that it kind of really became the message but when we were on it it was this it was a, it was more about the performance it was more about the the, the theatrical storyline of the of the show and we were just having fun yeah we, but, we, but now in retrospect <laughs> You guys really, um, in a way, as you say, you were young. You you grew up together in a really short time. There was a <laughs> yeah. lot that happened for you together. It was also at a time where we were like young and vulnerable. You know, like yeah. you, you impressionable. So, like your mind, so, right? Very impressionable. I mean, at so that then, time. Jose, w- what was life like for you once the tour was over? It was a rude awakening, <laughs> to be honest. You know, <laughs> it was like I didn't want to be in New York. I'm like, what is this? What am I coming back to? Because you get so spoiled at that age, you know, especially at that age, you know. So we got used to the the the, the lifestyle. We <laughs> think it's all gonna be like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like, okay, what do we do now? Like, mm. where's the private jet? <laughs> where's, where's my driver to pick me up with my pretty um? <laughs> Yeah, you know. So at that age, we were so impressionable, like. Kevin said, and and it was a rude awakening at that time. You know, I remember like, ill. <laughs> what have, what do I do now? Like, I spent all my money. I yeah, arrived, I arrived back in LA with with some good clothes. No car, no home, <laughs> no job. What am I doing? Where am I going? Oops. <laughs> and scene, it's over. Okay, the tour is over. You guys had, and this is in the film. You had a bit a falling out with Madonna, uh, somewhat after Truth or Dare came out. Yeah. Um, Kevin, what went wrong in that relationship? Uh, well. Well, I think it was a, there was a lot of misunderstanding. You know, first of all, in our contract, we had a clause for uh, for a movie, and then her and her team weren't acknowledging the clause in the contract. And the other guys, did, um, they didn't, I don't know if they even had a contract, but we had the same agent, and we ended up, we ended up suing her over the over the movie because that clause wasn't honored. Uh, and Gabriel had an entirely different issue where he was sort of forcibly outed, and 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 is it. He had been told that anything he didn't want in the movie wouldn't be in there. And so when he asked for that one scene, the kissing scene, which is a wonderful scene, he asked for that to be out. And, they and wouldn't she didn't want to take it, it out. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that was huge for, that, for them. And we all sort of went our separate ways at that point. How did that affect you, Oliver, to lose that relationship? Oh, sitting across the table. Oh my God! That <laughs> that was she the hardest. Wanna, she wanted to look at us. Oh my! It was it was hard. I, she I, was me, there. She came oh, in yes, to give we, her deposition. That, deposition. Yes. Oh my God! And I don't want to speak too much on it, but yeah. it was so uncomfortable because me, my heart was breaking. Me and Kevin, I, I was she crying. Not, I was oh crying. my God! Yeah, crying oh, and heart. the hit. Her head was down. She wouldn't look at us, and wow. until the very end. To the very end, wow. and it was like, oh yeah. Oh my God, she I wanted she she I mean she she wanted to hurt us in, in that well she I, felt hurt I'm yeah, sure yeah she felt hurt she felt so hurt so she wanted to like but but her her go to I think was like like I'm gonna yeah, fight yeah back. always yeah but, like we never intended to hurt her that at was all. never ever our intention at all do you guys I mean she get Madonna gets a lot of praise for bringing gay culture to the mainstream especially in 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 this film uh, but you guys were the pioneers of of uh, you Jose especially were a real pioneer <laughs> of Vogue dancing yeah. did you ever feel that you and other gay men of color were being used. Everybody always yeah, thinks they that. Always it's, so, it's so weird because honestly, she came into, I don't look at it as like she took from the community and people say she never gave back and that, you know, she stole the dance. And when in, in reality, I, I feel that she took two of their own of the community. You know, and like gave her this opportunity and brought us to the forefront of the integrity of it. You know, so I think that was her way of giving back to the community because she took two of their own. She elevated it. And aside from that, I think that it would take a star like her to to pull it out of the community and take it worldwide. I mean, who else can would would have been able to do that? You know. she never said she'd be She started and, Vogue. And my bag. She brought Vogue. She came, yeah. And she's coming, not like, oh, Mariah Carey, from my I'm background, the first Vogue ever. Like, no. My background of hip-hop, when it was introduced to me, Voguing, I was amazed. I was like, let's do this. <laughs> I mean, and, and such a cool type of style of dance. I love it so much. I still do it to this day. But I think uh, that, yeah, like we were yeah. saying, it was a lot of that, you know, like... It wasn't that she stole or yeah, like never. I yeah. anything. It was, I it was like born out of appreciation. Bad. Yeah, and she, she just still, made it even bigger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She made it bigger and, and worldwide. Because I mean, the first thing you think of when people when you think of Vogue, the first thing people do is go like this. Yeah, Madonna. Madonna yeah. You know, yeah. so. that movement will forever Ever. be like engraved. It's in like pop thriller. Culture. It's like Michael Jackson's Thriller. Mm. You know Thriller. You know Vogue. 
I don't think Vogue would be what it is without her. But without her, yeah. I mean, she's a if, crucial element of that, bringing this this an, gay underground culture to the mainstream and creating this. Yeah. Nobody if, would if have another been able artist, to do it. If people. another artist would have did Vogue, it, I don't think it would have been some, the same. Some of them tapped into it though, like yeah. uh, Malcolm McLaren and the right. Moose yes. Orchestra. Yeah. They had tapped into it yeah. before her, and it didn't do anything. No. It remained underground, just where he found it. <laughs> It's yeah. the strike strike a pose film. I mean, it really it's a documentary about a documentary, which is sort yeah. of funny. Yeah. But I, I I wonder, you know, and in the process of making that, you guys all came together, as you say, twenty five years later. Oh my gosh. Oliver, what was that like for you to be reunited oh, with your boys twenty five years later? I, was, I think I was the third or fourth person that came in. About to we, the dinner at the, 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 the dinner at the reunion, and here's the thing: they kept us apart. I stayed in Beverly Hills somewhere. Yeah, Kevin, they did a good job. Yeah. At Kevin that. was at home. Different cars. Um, Jose, yeah. different cars, they and we knew, good. we knew that what was going to be happening. But we the didn't way get to talk about it. Was it. So, it was so perfect because it was like a breath of fresh. I was like, oh my god, I feel like I'm back on tour. <laughs> I, I'm like, my boys are with me. It was nothing but love and oh, we a lot of crying. emotional. A lot it was of... it was so emotional. We cried. You don't see it in. We cried a, a lot. lot. Yeah, I mean, it would have been too man, much crying. My man Jose <laughs> gave me the biggest hug. It oh, because I missed you so uh, much, uh, That's, and so many things that I didn't get to say to you guys, and I felt like before I didn't want to lose any more time. And those are my boys. Definitely not lose anyone else. You yeah. know. Do so you I, wish that Madonna were were here with you guys, Kevin? Um, I, th I. I wish she was at the dinner, but at the same time, I feel like we needed a chance to reconnect, I think almost first, to really get all that out of the open. If she had been there, it would have been all about her and all about us with her. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and I think having us together really just solidified our own bond between us. Definitely. We all, and we all it, also re reminisced about her a it, lot and spoke about her, uh, her a lot. It yeah. turned out so perfect and right when we saw each other. Because yeah. it could have easily went wrong. It oh, been, yeah. It could have <laughs> been, but it could have been, oh, I'm better. Uh, I've done I don't want to deal. Why am I and, here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you could sum it up, uh, looking back now, how did that tour, the Blonde Ambition tour of 1990, how did that change your life? I'll ask each of you one at a time, wow. Kevin. Oh gosh, how did it change my life? Um, it, you know what? She told me to to grab life by the balls and don't let go, <laughs> and I took that to heart. I took it almost everything she said to heart. She's like, you know, be strong, be bold, be courageous, stand up for yourself, you know. And that's one of the reasons why I did the lawsuit, honestly, was, was to be honor her own words to me, her own advice to me. Um, it changed my life in the, in the sense that I suddenly realized that I have a voice um, and that I can be a stand for others and that I can make a difference for my community. And, and standing up to her made me realize I can stand up to anybody, mm -hmm. anybody. Oliver, how did it change your life? Um... Well, at the age of 19, I was still living with my, my mother in L.A. and my father and my brother and two sisters. It changed my life. It, it, I grew up quick because mm -hmm. after the tour, Oliver went and lived by himself. Mm -hmm. And mom didn't kick me out. She goes, I was, I mean, I'm a mama's boy. Um, I wanted to sit at home, but I, it's, she made me grow up like, like that. And I moved out and... Haven't looked that, back. Uh, haven't looked back and, you know, made me confident. I mean, every now and then I the confidence go away, but she made me the man I am, you know, kind of today, you know, so. Jose, what about you? For me, I think it made me uh, realize that I was good enough, that I was, yeah, <laughs> that I had a talent, that I had, that I was good enough to get a job and that I was interesting enough as an artist, you know, and I think that, she put the stamp of approval on that, mm -hmm. you know, because at that age, 18, 19, you're just embarking on your career, you know, and you're like, am I good enough? Uh, auditions, they get, you know, but the fact that, yeah, the fact that she was like, you are perfect. And I believed it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're you perfect. Should. Yeah. And I think that she definitely gave me that extra um, seal of approval that I needed to go out and into the world and continue to be what I was on tour. And she what made I, us all pros. Yeah, yeah because, right. I mean, period. Yeah, pros. I would. And you guys still, I know you still get fan mail from people oh God, who saw you in, in Truth it's or Dare. Ama it's yeah. amazing. What kinds of things did they say oh, to you? The one that I got that I couldn't, I, I got one that the guy, he was on the verge of suicide. 
And he said, watching Truth or Dare and watching, you know, the way I was so comfortable in my skin and it <clears throat> saved his life and it gave him hope. And I like, I couldn't, I was like, how do you take that? Like, what do you say to that? Especially, I never set out to save anyone or change anyone's life. At that age, I'm barely figuring out my own, you know? So to hear that still today, 25 years later, Oh, you, because of you, I came out to my parents. Because of you, I stood up, to, you know, to my friends yeah. and I came out and I feel so good. Those it are like things like, yeah, yeah, if I have nothing I get, else, I'll take that. I like, get most impressed by the ones, or, or I get most delighted by the ones uh, where they say, you know, I, 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 you changed my life. You, 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 you made it okay for me to know I could be anything I want to be. And also because I'm I'm Asian and there were no Asians on TV mm, ever. Like and you were the yeah. only Asian I ever saw in anything and you kept coming up and kept working and it gave me hope that, that I could I could do what I want. I could be an entertainer, I could be a dancer, I, I could mean, be it's crazy. Anything. The most recent fan thing that happened was in Berlin. This girl stood up in uh. Q and A questions. In a way, she said it was her like her bucket list. Mm -hmm. She goes, I saw the movie when I was 13 or something like this. She goes, my dream was to meet you guys, not Madonna. To meet us. Mm -hmm. yeah. We broke That's when you realize we broke like, you down. really touched some people. We you were know? on the stage in front of the screen, the I movie couldn't. screen. And I was we hiding behind at, Slam because oh, I was just bawling. And we I'm couldn't, like, I couldn't she, talk. She was waiting to meet us. That, that's all she wanted in life. She wanted to meet us. I mean, it's fine. And when you hear it, you're like, oh, big deal. You wanted to meet me. But when you see the emotion and this girl oh, is like important. in tears, you're like, oh, my God, she's being serious. <laughs> you know, because you can say to somebody, oh, I've been dying to meet you. Yeah. But when you say you're like, oh, my, and you see the expression right there in front of you, it like so touches you so deep. And, and you cannot find the words to like, what do you say? Thank you. And just, and just like, <laughs> that's just, it. Thank you. Like, you want to say so much. Go ahead. Just I'll. like last night. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Like last night, people asking me, oh, can we take pictures? I'm like, we're just Oliver, Kevin, and Jose. Of yeah, course but you the can. picture thing is different. We're grateful no, 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 that no, people no, no, even want to take no, a picture. Yeah. Yeah. But, Honestly, like, after all these say, years yeah. and being in front of the camera and then not being in front of the camera, or like, you know, it, it's it's just an honor for anyone to uh, ask. Yeah. Like, we, love, we, we love sharing and, mm -hmm. and hearing support from people. To, oh, to get the it, love yeah. from people from 25 years, for 25 years to get the love that we get, it's amazing because we're just normal. And Guys. dancers, dancers is hard because you never get, dancers never get the credit. And you never put a, a face voice. or a name, yeah. Yeah. you know, so for us to be dancers and people, hey, Kevin, oh my God, and Oliver and Jose is like. And yeah. have a whole right. documentary about you. Two. And, uh, <laughs> two. Yeah. We're, we're two. That's right, two. Sorry, what am I saying? If you. I just wish you guys had been a little more, you know, communicative and open. Really? It's <laughs> <laughs> what a great conversation. I've so enjoyed it. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Thank you. so, so much. much. You're great. You're fantastic. Yeah, and your voice is so I, I know. I know. It's funny because looking at you and you're talking, I'm, I'm taking like, points from yeah. how <laughs> eloquent and yeah. Oh, you guys. Can it's you stay? Very... Can you stick around? Can we hang out with you? <laughs>